Verizon Press Level, Ted Robinson, Tim Ryan, our team. Game day starts two and a half to three hours before. I try to be at the stadium. I usually try to be in the booth two hours before. So that means budgeting time to walk the field. I like to try to walk around the field, even if it's for 15 minutes. I'll get here at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning for a one o'clock game, go down on the field, walk around, talk to some of the opposing coaches and players, guys that I know and have relationships historically. And then once the ball's kicked off, just go, react, call the game, have fun, be yourself. The 49ers are ready to go. Bruce Ellington is deep to return the opening kick of the season from Blair Walsh. The greatest gift I've had for this job was 30 to 35 years ago when I came out of college and I was trained in radio. And the training that radio provides, which is one, how to use your voice, how to project, how to inflect, how to command someone's attention. And when the play gets dramatic, make sure you're listening to me. Broken up, broken up by Navarro Bowman. The 49ers have held. There are three calls that jump out to me right away now over six years. The Vernon Post is the obvious gold medalist. It cost me my left vocal cord. Third down, Alex takes the snap. Alex looking. Got it. The post, and it's got him. Caught. Touchdown. Touchdown 49ers. <laughs> Vernon Davis with the play of his life. Alex Smith with the play of his life. And the 49ers are nine seconds away from playing for the NFC Championship. Can you feel Candlestick? The excitement of that game, four touchdowns in the last four minutes, the last one being this incredibly unexpected score when certainly I was thinking field goal overtime. The second call was in the 2013 season, we were playing the Rams in St. Louis. The 49ers were in St. Louis territory and had run the ball for what appeared to be a first down. Jeff Fisher challenged the spot. The officials, after the review, re-spotted the ball short of the line to gain. So the 49ers lined up and ran, and Frank Gore broke through the line and ran for a touchdown. I immediately burst it out. Take that, Rams! Touchdown, 49ers! Spot this, ah. Frank Gore says. <laughs> As he wheels in the end zone. And that was the emotional moment overtaking the rational thought. That's not really supposed to happen, although in this case, I'm not going to apologize. The third moment was the first season. The 49ers were playing in Seattle. The 49ers were winning this game in the first half. Seattle punted the ball. On this punt, the 49ers had the receiver catch the ball, and then they ran a handoff on the punt return. Handoff was fumbled. Seattle recovered, went in, and it changed the entire momentum of the game. As the ball was fumbled and Seattle recovered it, and again, my voice blurted out, what were they thinking? I think I spoke for virtually every 49er fan watching because that's what every fan was thinking. He could broadcast the phone book and sound good doing it. That's Ted Robinson. So many people in this industry, they try to script an unscripted event. You just got to react. And being with a guy and trusting a guy and understanding a guy that he trusts me and my football mentality, and I know that his homework's done, we just sit back and react and call the game, and it's a blast. The best part about working with Tim for me was that I felt like I knew him because Tim hosted a show on NFL radio for years. And when I first took the 49er job, I was driving to and from Santa Clara for the daily stuff I was required to do, I would listen to NFL radio. And I wound up listening to Tim Ryan hosting a show quite a bit. And I can't tell you over four or five years of those drives how much football I felt I absorbed listening to Tim on the radio. Tim also has a great knack of being able to speak football in words we all can understand. And that's another gift. Carlos Hyde is making an impression unbelievable vision right there to cut not only cut it up in the hole but he wasn't even looking at Rolando McLean who was sitting right there and just felt his presence stuck his left foot in the ground pushed it to the right and picked up a bunch of extra yards still had a couple of years left on my contract at Fox but with this stadium with this team being a Bay Area guy went to Oak Grove High School in the 80s I mean how could you not be a humongous 49er fan so really wanted to be part of it and made the move to leave Fox to come over here and really enjoyed last season. The list of things I haven't done is much shorter <laughs> than the list of sports I have, but the great opportunities were the Olympics and then Wimbledon. To get those two opportunities, I mean, the Olympics and Wimbledon are extraordinary events. And then the last one was in 2009 when I was called and asked to do the 49ers. And you get the opportunity to be the voice of the 49ers. That was about a seven second deliberation. Warner back with all kinds of time against a four man rush, throws one down the field, pick, Patrick 
Willis with the interception. Hill throws one deep on the post pattern for Bruce. has got it, and he's down to the five, first and goal. Standing in, sending everybody down the field. Going to roll out, and he's sacked. Ball free, rolling to the sideline, and the game is over. The best part of the job is to watch the best people at their profession play. And I use the word play because it is work, but it's also play. Growing up knowing the history of this franchise, knowing what this franchise has meant and still means to the Bay Area and being part of that, I was an overachieving, decent player, I guess. So I laugh with my wife. I'm getting paid to critique world-class athletes. Guys whose shoes I couldn't even shine. I've done real work before. This isn't real work. This is a blessing.